sleep in her bed. Nigga, that was the night she said, do you need something? And he opened the door. Homie was finna kill her shit. What's good, y'all? Welcome back, or welcome if you are new. Thank you for checking out the video. Um, if you haven't seen the TikTok uh, scare reaction I did, there was a clip in it where there was a child talking about there's a dead girl in the tree. Like you see her. What's she doing? Uh, on her tummy. It's dead. And there was nothing there. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ten times creepier than that. We're going to be reacting to disturbing children drawings with the backstory. Uh, this is by what I forgot what channel this is. Mr. Nightmare. I've been watching Mr. Nightmare for years since I was like a kid. Jeez. This is crazy. Well, original video link will be down in the description. I hope y'all enjoy it. Let's get into the video. Years ago I did a somewhat lighthearted video about the creepiest children's drawings. <laughs> I made jokes about a lot of them, but a few on that list did seem like they might have had some sinister backstories. Over the years, I've gotten a handful of kids' drawings with backstories emailed to me. Today, I'm going to be compiling a few of those into this video. This was the drawing made by a six-year-old boy in 2012. The picture was found in his room by his older sister Tracy, who sent this to me, who was 14 at the time, and she showed it to her parents. In the picture of the family around the dinner table, drawn in a typical six-year-old skill level. The reason Tracy showed it to her family... I'ma be so real, I couldn't even draw that. Honestly, I would have fucked this whole dinner table up if I were to try to draw. As an adult, like I'm talking about right now, I wouldn't be able to do this. Because she could recognize all I the family members at completely. the dinner table, even the family dog and cat. Who she couldn't recognize was the man sitting on the floor kind of behind the table. Tracy said in her emails to me that when she was asking her little brother who that man was, he kept shrugging his shoulders and saying he's not allowed to tell. The man was drawn to be dressed in all black and has reddish brown curly hair as you can see. Because of her little brother's refusal to explain who that fifth person in the picture was, she showed it to her parents, explaining that he likely had an imaginary friend or was pretending to be seeing ghosts. See, we don't need none After of the that though. the parents confronted the child at dinner asking who the man in the picture was, the boy made a pouty face and shrugged his shoulders. He did this any time they asked, with the most detailed answer from his mouth being, I'm not allowed to tell. The parents, specifically the dad, weren't phased by it, as See, really nah, a six-year-old could draw anything and create some kind of crazy story in their head behind it. Tracy would be responsible for watching her brother often when their parents weren't home. And one day when she was left in charge of watching of him, kitchen? she heard her brother talking to someone in his room. Upon getting to his room, she learned he was just playing with his toy car set on the floor, talking to most likely himself as he played. Tracy asked if he was talking to anyone. He looked at her and shrugged his shoulders again, pouting his face. Tracy Which then means... noticed some candies on the floor of her brother's room. A specific kind of green apple flavored candy that she'd never seen her mother buy before. She asked him where he got this, and he ignored her, going back to playing. Bro, Tracy no, you can't be ignoring these brother, questions, yelling, dude. Give them you back. need to start answering. She waited until her parents returned home to ask if either of them had bought the unusual candy. Since the boy was only six and it was summer break, aka receiving the candies at school wasn't even a possibility, the random candies appearing in the boy's room became a concern. Even as the boy was scolded and pressed by his parents as to where he got the candies from, he still just made his pouty, angry face and ignored them. See? The boy was grounded by his I'm not saying, like, discipline, discipline your children, because they need, they can't just be like, nah, I'm not answering you. What do you mean you're not answering? You finna answer these questions. <laughs> We're finna get some answers today, because, because you having imaginary friends and having weird candies in your room and the weird drawing, that's the biggest one and not explaining it. Oh, now we got problems. His father until he would answer the question so he wasn't allowed to leave his room. The family checked the closets in his room, under the bed, even the closets outside of the room. The idea that someone was inside of the house was out the window. On that same night that he was grounded, Tracy sat close to her bedroom door instead of on her bed, so that she would easily hear if and when her brother in the next room would start talking. And sure enough, when he did, which to note was way past her brother's bedtime, she jumped up and ran to his room, opened the door, and saw her little six-year-old brother standing at his open window, talking to a man who looked as though he were about to climb into the room. 
What? Tracy screamed for her mom and dad, causing the man at the window to flee, and her brother began to cry. Bro! When Tracy told her parents that a man was talking to her brother through his window, the police were called. The boy still refused to talk at first, but with the police there, he eventually said that his friend told him not to tell anyone about him, or that he couldn't come and play anymore. When asked his friend's name and age, he said he didn't know. When asked what the two of them would do, the boy said he would come with snacks and candies for him and just play with toys. When asked how they met, he said they met in front of the house one day when the man stopped on his bike and gave him some candy. See? Hell no. I'm over here thinking it's a ghost, a demon. It was an actual human? That's even worse. A dude just coming up to your kid window, giving him candies and playing with his toys. Like, that's some weirdo shit. Oh, that shit really just bothers me. Is that a bug on my fucking... There was a bug on my, on my screen. But now nah, that's just some weirdo shit, dude. Like, and he he did this for a while. Like, how do you not get caught? And this is why discipline your kids. Because if if they if he would have just told them, like, yeah, there's this random man coming to my window, none of this would have even needed to happen. Because homie was most definitely finna take boy at some point. After offering to come back with more candies and snacks, Tracy's brother told him which bedroom window was his, and that's when this started. Yeah, nah, Chief. Submitted Hell to me nah. all the way back in 2015. This was sent by a mother of two children, a six-year-old boy and an eight-year-old girl. Almost every night between the hours of 12 and 5 a.m., the boy would come to the parents' bedroom crying that he scared because someone or something was in his room at the edge of his bed. The boy would claim that every night, the person or thing would come out from his closet and move to the same spot at the foot of his bed and just stand there not moving. The first few times the parents would check the boy's bedroom just to make him feel better closet door would always be opened. When questioned why the closet door was always open when it was supposed to be shut, he would claim that it was because he was telling the truth about the thing in his closet. Every time the parents would show their son that the closet was empty, he would go back to sleep. Their eight-year-old daughter never had any similar issues to this. For a few nights, the parents would let him start sleeping in their room on the floor with a blanket. On the floor? Though, Damn, after this had been going on like too long, the parents the decided too? to humor him one more time and asked him to draw what the thing at the foot of his bed looked like. His drawing sent chills Hell down no. his parents' spines. Hell no. In the drawing was some grudge-like figure that seems like it would be enough to give a grown man nightmares. Hell yeah. A six-year-old boy. And she drew kneecaps. It also appears to be something at the window. And or he. Questioned I, about I don't this, know what kind of child it was. said that he sees it at the window sometimes too when it's not at the foot of his bed. The parents' solution to this was moving their son's bed to the spare bedroom across the hall that didn't have any big closets. The mom who submitted this couldn't help but get a little creeped out herself at the drawing, and every time he would come crying to their room in the middle of the night. That was it? Oh yeah, that was most definitely a demon and in boy closet. a little different in that it's a mix of drawings and writing, and there's three different pages. That was a real-life ghost, the this babysitter. This was found by the new babysitter of an 11-year-old boy named Rocco in Ottawa, Canada. The babysitter, who I'll refer to as Alyssa, was needed while the parents of Rocco were away for a week. According to Alyssa, Rocco was very quiet and kept to himself most of the time. He would stay in his room for a majority of the day, and would only come out to get food from the fridge or to go downstairs to play video games. Sounds Alyssa about right. Alyssa tried to befriend the child Literally the first me. day, but eventually gave up after realizing Rocco either didn't like her or was just a very unfriendly, creepy kid in general. Alyssa would spend the majority of her shifts doing schoolwork and watching movies. She knew Rocco had an obsession with guns because of the amount of toy guns he had. They would lay across the house in varying rooms. How old is this kid? Nerf guns, to airsoft guns, to varying types of toy guns. I'd be like eight. Alyssa had never been in Rocco's room yet though, but one night when Alyssa was having trouble sleeping, she heard Rocco sneak into her designated bedroom and was just standing by the doorway. She sat up in her bed and asked Rocco is something wrong. Then she just closed the door quickly and she heard him running back to his room. The next day, Alyssa went into Rocco's room for the first time. Rocco wasn't in there and the light was off. This meant he was in the basement playing video games, as those were the only two rooms he'd ever be in according to Alyssa. He didn't even seem to seek hanging out with friends. Sprawled out on Rocco's floor were a bunch of papers. The first piece of paper that caught her attention was this drawing of a handgun. It wasn't anything really that's alarming. That's pretty detailed. It just further demonstrated his fixation on guns. Alyssa Man, but that's papers, at a young age. That's not that good, of bro. Papers stapled together with three different staples. They formed what could best be described as a little storybook. The 
The first page looked to be the cover page, titled The Babysitter. Immediately, Alyssa assumed this little book was about her. But not wanting to get caught reading it, she took pictures of each page of the little booklet, as well as a picture of the handgun drawing, and left the room to go read it on her phone elsewhere. <coughs> These were the pictures she had taken. This was the second page. Rocco wrote on it, it was a regular day in the house, when mom and dad brought over the babysitter for the first time. There's something about her that I hate. I think it's how ugly she is. She's a huge nerd. I don't want her in the house. Not sure why my mom and dad hired her. I think I'm going to have to kill her. What? The drawing See, on the page is what's supposed to be Alyssa. This shit is wild because right now I'm watching this uh, show on Discovery Plus called Signs of a Psychopath. It only has two seasons and I finished season two because I started backwards. And now I'm on season one. And holy shit, people are crazy, dude. Like, this is the type of shit you want to look out for. Especially because he's so young. Like, holy shit. Sitting on the couch on her phone, and Rocco spying on her through the doorway. This was the next page. It's day three, and she's still here. Parents think I'm a baby or something that needs an annoying, ugly babysitter that eats all our food and drinks. In this drawing, Rocco appears to be grabbing a kitchen knife while Alyssa's in the fridge. The child's yeah, you disdain watch for his back. babysitter becomes increasingly apparent in a disturbing manner. But the next and last page is by far the worst. I'm gonna keep it a it bug. I'm quitting. She caught after me this. sneaking into her room. I have to be quieter next time. The picture is quite obviously Rocco holding a knife behind his back while Alyssa lay <gasps> asleep in her bed. Nigga, that was the night she said, do you need something? And he opened the door. Homie was finna kill her shit. Oh my God. Wow, she got lucky. She got lucky that she caught him and he decided to write a quick story about it because it failed. So he had to come up with a new plan. Yo, this is crazy. The implications of this picture are beyond transparent. Alyssa returned to Rocco's room while he was still in the basement and lo and behold, found a small kitchen knife on his bedside nightstand. Alyssa sent the pictures of the drawings and knife to Rocco's parents and then called them. At first, the parents tried to convince her he must be joking around. No! They were apparently easily See, convinced. See? Horrible parenting. What do you mean he's just playing around? He... Mm. It's that Rocco could have monstrous intentions. They had Rocco's grandmother take over that same day. Alyssa I wouldn't even want the grandma around him. ...or any other authorities. She accepted her payment for the two weeks that night, and she accepted the parents' apologies, but not without recommending that they take their son to get some serious help. Bro, hell, yo, Mr. Nightmare, 10 out of 10 video. This shit was fire. I need another one. I know you said you waited some years to do this one. Can you not wait years? Do more, because this shit is interesting. But he was really finna off his babysitter. I want to know how old the kid was. Cause that was the craziest story out of all three of them honestly i mean i don't know the dude coming to the kid window is pretty pretty wild y'all tell me out of the first one and the last one which one was the wildest and hey if you think the second one was the wildest let me know down in the comments but i hope y'all enjoyed the reaction like comment subscribe and i'll see y'all next one i love y'all peace i'ma pull up on this avenue rock 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 shit a few times yeah that it live life ain't got my hands no tattoos used to do zans in the back of the classroom now i'm too rich off the price from the radical that shotgun to tear him in half like a decimal 40 with